Hello. Our reflection for today is based on Luke chapter 5 verses 33 to the end. At home we have a bread maker which makes the most gorgeous fresh bread. However, it doesn't keep so well and sometimes my husband will make a fresh loaf before we finish the old. He could be quite insistent that we should eat up the stale loaf before we can start on the freshly baked loaf, which is sitting there on the side, cooling down, crusty and gorgeous and smelling amazing. I argue that if we do that, we'll just end up eating more stale bread. Our passage today is talking about change, radical change and how we deal with things that are new and different. Just before our passage, Jesus had called Levi, a tax collector, a despised and hated Roman collaborator, a thief and a liar, unclean. But Levi answered the call and became a follower of Jesus. Levi threw a party. Of course, he didn't have any nicer friends to invite, so the party was mainly tax collectors and some others. I dread to think, probably equally as undesirable. But Jesus is there. How can a man who sets himself up as a religious leader and makes virtually blasphemous claims about his relationship to God mix with such people. It's just not how we do things round here. Allowing new people like this in will change things. And then we get to our passage, which Luke has placed quite deliberately next to this story. The Pharisees have seen Jesus allow his disciples to break some basic religious rules. Jesus allows, even encourages, his disciples to eat and drink rather than fast and pray. Fundamental elements of how their religion had, had been done are ignored, undermined, threatening the system that has defined our religion in this country for a thousand years. Jesus then offers two illustrations of how we should deal with change. Those times where things have to change, have to be different, where the new has to be allowed in and even preferred. Firstly, there is the illustration of sewing a piece of new fabric onto an old piece of fabric to repair it. Doing this actually ruins both pieces. You've made a hole in the new fabric and the repair won't work because the new fabric will shrink and pull in the old and ruin the piece. You have to choose between the old and the new. And then we have the illustration of the new wine. If you put new wine into old wineskins, you will again ruin both. The old wineskin splits and the new wine is lost. You have to choose between the old and the new. And then there is this curious little sentence at the end of the reading. And no one, after drinking the old wine, desires new wine, but says the old is good. Is this a comment on the delights of properly aged and mature wine? Actually, I don't think it is. In my experience, you can have good and bad old wine, and good and bad new wine. Rather, I think Jesus is commenting on the reluctance of the people to accept change. They'll keep drinking the old wine, whatever, because it's what they know. I find this challenging. What old wine or old bread do I keep using? How prepared am I to enjoy the delights, the gift of the new? 
how much do I prefer to stay with what I'm used to, even if it is a bit stale by now? Take a moment to think about what in your life, the way you live out your faith, what goes on in your church is old and stale. What is new and fresh? How are you going to embrace the new? And a quick footnote, in case you're worried about me wasting the old bread, I use it to make breadcrumbs for a delicious lemon meringue pudding. Amen.